as well. So what do you mean by development? Development is just the maturation of the individual, especially from the nervous system point of view. So it's a continuous process of maturation from the fetal life to adulthood. It's a combined outcome of nature and nurture as we will review. There are huge changes in the first three to four years. We actually learn more than the first three to four years than any time in life after that. And especially the first two years where we learn a lot without even realizing we are learning. Early diagnosis of deviations from normal may help us to channel the development in the appropriate way. So it's very important to identify the conditions where there is a risk for development and we can focus on early intervention which has been shown to help especially in the babies with birth asphyxia or premature babies and we can channel their development in the right direction. So we reviewed the physical growth and uh, mental development or neurologic maturation follows a progression. So the child is growing and you also see the transition in different stages of the development. You can see the milestones progressing as well. So. Uh, it's very important that we continue to support the child's development as best as we can as we go on with the maturation. The neonatal brain weighs 350 grams. It triples in size by 18 months and by 7 years it reaches the adult size of 1350 grams. So. Uh, you can see that the first two years is a critical phase. I mean, uh, the 18 months is less than two years actually. So if you say triples, it's crossing 1000 grams by 18 months. It becomes like uh, 1100 grams by two years of age. And then the final size is not far from the 1350 grams. So it's very important that we support the nutrition, the development, avoid things like the screen time which can affect the child's development in the crucial 18 months to 2 years of age and of course there is the first 1000 uh, days of from conception uh, to the first 2 years so this uh, is a critical period so whatever the mother does in terms of nutrition, her health, her stress levels and uh, these will impact on the child's development as well. There are a few principles of development which applies to most species including humans. So the development always progresses from something which is simple to achieve to a more complex stage and there is also a craniocaudal progression. So uh, the head control comes first, the back starts straightening, then the child can sit and then the walking comes. So this is the craniocaudal progression. We also have maturation from the center to the periphery. So the fine motor uh, using the hands and building objects and things like that, it comes after you have stabilized the proximal part in the shoulder, the trunk, the head and neck. So obviously the head control comes first, then you have uh, stability of the trunk, then the what we call the upper limb girdle, then the hands get control. And the development also progresses from something general which is like waving the hand in excitement to specific where the child points to an object and gets happy. Within the same field, you may have sequential uh, development. The sequence is reasonably fixed, but there may be variations and uh, the speed of development may vary. There are common variations. For example, a child may crawl or may not crawl and bottom shuffling pattern can be seen in the children who don't crawl and typically the children who are shuffling on their bottom it tends to be in the family and they also have uh, a delay in walking in most of the situations. <laughs> the rate of development may be different in different fields. So we will be looking at what the different fields are. For example, the fine motor may grow at a different pace to the gross motor milestones. The child may start walking before they can develop a pincer grasp or it may go the other way around. A child is very adept at finger uh, usage of the finger but they are lazy, they don't want to stand up and walk and in girls the language development goes ahead of the other fields compared to boys. So this uh, difference in rate of development may be called dissociated development 
there is a range obviously depending on your stimulation and things so a child who is more stimulated by the older siblings to run, run around may do better in the motor tasks than one who is uh, always sitting at home and watching the television so they don't do well in the motor aspect so this is due to the stimulation aspect but if it's going beyond a certain range then the dissociative development may have uh, warning signs for example if a child has stone abnormality in the legs due to cerebral palsy for example their walking may be delayed while if their intelligence is bad they may actually be able to speak and their fine motor may not be affected if the upper limb is not affected so what are the different fields of development so you have physical development which involves gross motor and fine motor so the fine motor has the gross and fine manipulative skills so most of the tasks we perform as we develop our advance uh, is related to the fine motor so threading a bead cutting with the scissors writing uh, these are all fine motor and it involves a lot of coordination sensory development uh, involves vision hearing smell touch taste and proprioception obviously the coordination of the hands and the eyes is important for most of the fine motor tasks so maturation of the vision proceeds at the same time and uh, language development is very important as well and you have three components of the language you have the receptive speech where you receive the language input and understand what's happening you have the expressive speech uh, where you learn to express what you want to say and articulation where uh, you have to put the express expressive speech the thought comes to your mind but unless you articulate or speak it you, you won't produce the sounds that convey the meaning and obviously there's a lot of environmental factors the nurture component comes a lot in language development and this is one of the most important areas where we should stress on avoiding screen time so the same uh, applies uh, cognitive development is related to intelligence emotional development is related to how the child copes with the maturation process their understanding of the world uh, there are different theories for how to focus on these understandings so you have uh, as a child develops abstract reasoning and concrete uh, reasoning develops later on so the way the child perceives the world the child perceives the word punishment the child perceives separation from the parents all this is different so they have a magical belief as well so sometimes you should be careful in how you deal with uh, difficult situations in a child's life because their understanding is different from how we see it we have social development where the child understands how the rules are placed in the society so the role play in games how the child follows rules whether they are disruptors in the school so these aspects come to social development and a lot of social development you develop develop from a role model so it's very important that the parents play very good role models for the children so we have moral and spiritual development as well uh, that again depends on where you grow up and how your family culture is so there are many factors that affect development so you may have prematurity which is one of the most uh, important risk factors uh, as more and more extreme premature babies are surviving so in prematurity we are more worried about the babies who are less than 32 weeks uh, the babies more than 32 weeks mostly uh, develop normally or within the normal range even though there are many studies which show that a higher proportion of them may have problems still compared to the uh, general population they develop reasonably well however because the larger proportion of prematurity comes in the late preterm babies they do contribute more to the child children with developmental problems uh, neonatal illnesses like those affecting the brain sepsis meningitis and birth asphyxia or hie socio economic status plays an important role if the parents are educated if they are uh, affording support the children tend to do better Uh, family environment whether there is an opportunity for the child to play and stimulation is really important so uh, typically a family which doesn't encourage physical activity where there is a lot of television viewing where the nutrition is not adequate the stimulating environment is not there the children tend to lag behind nutrition in the early days is very important and uh, adequate protein intake is important as well for brain development iron has been shown to be a very important nutrient for brain development and that's why iron deficiency may in the first 6 months to 1 year can should be avoided to optimize your development so we categorize milestones as 
a certain achievement for the child at a certain age and the achievement of these milestones is based on sequence of events in each field i mentioned the different fields of development there is a wide range of normal and each child may differ as i said there may be dissociation between the different fields a progress in development in the individual fields is important so the child is sequentially following a pattern even if there is a slight delay if over the next month or so the child is making progress in that field it's less concerning than a child who stagnates there are also conditions where there may be regression where a child attains a milestone but after two or three months the child loses that particular milestone so a certain degree of regression happens in autism for example or you may have the more severe neurodevelopmental disorders where there is regression of milestones a problem affecting individual fields can lead to delay in other fields i mentioned the correlation between vision with fine motor and hearing problems can affect language for example and uh, we have uh, definitions for important milestones within a expected age range so there is always a range within which to attain so don't go by a pinpoint that you have to smile at 2 months a child can smile up to 3 months for example and if it's a premature baby you need to remember that you need to correct for their prematurity so uh, especially the babies below 32 weeks uh, the period of time by which they are premature that is added to their uh, that is reduced from their chronological age to give the corrected age for example a 32 weeker you may reduce up to 8 weeks from their current age and compare them with children of that age so it's very important that we have routine child surveillance uh, to pick up developmental problems so you have uh, the newborn period when we of course assess the child for any problems 6 to 8 weeks i told you yesterday with the growth that we assess the child at 2 4 6 months usually with the vaccination so the similar schedule can follow for vaccines and development and growth as well and then you should have an assessment of hearing within 6 months Uh, if the screening is not done you should formally assess the hearing as well and by 18 to 24 months a child dental review is important as well and a formal vision testing should be considered at the preschool age uh, in all children if you don't have it routinely you can seek it out if there is any concern of course you have to test the vision earlier you can see here that's a wide uh, range of normal so this is the normal range and then you have this slow but steady progress where they are progressing these may be the low achievers or they may catch up to do well later in life and uh, some children either because of socio economic reasons or bereavement or something like that they plateau they don't continue growing or they might have developed an insult to the brain which affects their brain development and then you have the regression which is very rare so the child develops milestones which they lose so these are usually very serious and you have to be paying attention to that you can see here that the gap between the normal and the abnormal becomes wider so it's easier to pick up abnormality as a child gets older so by school age the abnormalities are easier to pick up however when they are younger it's very difficult to pick up the differences so you may end up worrying the parents for problems which are actually in the normal range or you may miss problems unless you are looking specifically for certain uh, aspects of their development so there are certain things we look for at certain ages so in the newborn period the child starts regarding the face the vision is developed in the newborn period itself and the child can see the objects which are nearer to the baby so the focal length is adjusted in such a way that the baby can see the mother's face clearly while they are feeding and they do have color vision as well so it's very important that we uh, assess their uh, visual uh, assessment from a closer distance as the child matures binocular vision develops and distant vision develops as well the child starts responding to voice there may be primitive reflexes like sucking swallowing rooting development of the grasp and other reflexes so these primitive reflexes tend to wear off as the more advanced reflexes come on so the loss of primitive reflexes is a very important aspect of child development as well the gross motor development in the first year you achieve head control by 6 to 8 weeks and by 4 to 5 months can start sitting with support and can start turning from back to side by 6 to 8 months the child sits without support and can roll from back to stomach in my 9 to 10 months the child can crawl and start standing with support and walks by 12 months so this is the sequence so rolling over and uh, going on the knees sitting and then uh, they can start standing and walking so the 
stage of development can guide you in terms of what you should do for the child so when the child has started sitting with support you start considering a high chair this is usually the time we start weaning the child so it would help you with the feeding as well and the child enjoys sitting with support and looking around and they start developing more the stimulation is more of course not to watch television uh, avoid the baby walker there is really no benefit and uh, it can cause harm by accidents or it may cause toe walking so they may have a delayed walking so avoid the baby walker you have more developmentally appropriate toys according to the age in terms of vision and fine motor in the first year you have uh, fixing and following by six weeks and by four to five months the child reaches for toys by six months they reach for toys and have a palmar grasp they also start transferring from one hand to the other and they start putting the toys in the mouth by seven to nine months there is a crude uh, pincer grasp developing and by 12 months there is a fine pincer grasp so these are very important milestones and by 12 months they start releasing objects as well so the pincer grip is where a child can particularly pick with the thumb and the index finger and very small objects can be picked up The language in the first six weeks the child engages in vocalizing three months cooing and laughing remember that uh, even a deaf child can start uh, cooing and that's a imitating performance by six months the child babbles more complex sounds can turn to sound and by nine months there is two syllable words like mama dada without meaning and by 12 months there is words with meaning and of course as the child becomes uh, older your task development becomes complex i'm not going into the detail of this and uh, the important features by two to six years you have climbing stairs jumping hopping for gross motor and then for the fine motor you have refining of the grip they can draw shapes so by two years you can draw a vertical line and by 30 months they can imitate a circle and they can make a horizontal line by three years copy circle by three years copies across by 42 months and can draw a square by four years and diamond by six years so we show special tasks improving coordination so they can catch a ball building structures with cubes so this depends on practice and maturation as well and uh, jigsaw completion fixing of form boards these are good ways to assess their understanding increasing independence starts and they start exploring more and increasing muscle power and tone happens as well so uh, important features at two to six years we have uh, receptive language and vocabulary increases the sentence structure is more elaborate and in terms of cognitive skills uh, attention span improves selective attention improves power bladder control and toilet training usually start by 12 to 18 months some parents try to start early but too early starting is more like uh, conditioning rather than training and very important that we encourage play so the societal rules uh, start uh, getting established by that time and the child starts uh, playing in groups and learning rules and formal education begins as well so here a child is playing building blocks so this is the form board where they start recognizing different shapes and this is a very good developmental toy it's easier than the jigsaw so the child can start fitting the form board right from 12 to 15 months according to their maturation and these are wooden blocks usually they're quite easy for the child to play with so it's very important that the child has key milestones monitored by the pediatrician or the gp whenever there is a review with the doctor i mentioned earlier about holistic care so we should discuss safety we should discuss development we should discuss healthy parenting and we should discuss dental care and so on so the children with risk factors need close follow-up and you may have early intervention therapy some studies show a benefit from early intervention we should have a system to assess hearing and vision a support system for children uh, who are picked up as having abnormal development is important as well there is a whole spectrum of developmental disorders so we have normal development which is of course a wide range as well you have simple developmental delay where you may have possible mild learning difficulty Cerebral palsy is a movement related problem more commonly after birth asphyxia or prematurity. Uh, there is mainly a motor delay and you may have uh, neuromuscular problems in mild CP. And I mentioned the neurodegenerative conditions. You may have genetic conditions or familial conditions which lead to mental retardation or learning difficulty. 
and uh, hearing vision related problems also impact on overall development and many of these problems have seizures as an association and you may have coordination problems like clumsy child or apraxia you may have selective learning difficulty like dyslexia where you can't identify letters or uh, read and we have pervasive developmental disorders which of course is a whole spectrum by itself like autism the approach to management involves a family centered approach we should educate the family that there is a problem uh, it involves a multidisciplinary input from pediatrician physiotherapist occupational therapist speech and language therapist play therapist and learning support coordinator there is a child developmental pediatrician and neurologist orthopedic uh, doctors may be involved as well where there is a problem so the investigations would depend on the clinical picture most of the time you have the history to point out to the reason and then the special findings may lead to investigations or uh, tests there are special schools which help the children with significant learning difficulty you need regular monitoring of the development the parents need a lot of support sometimes they need respite care because it's very challenging to look after a child with developmental problems and these are better managed in countries with good social support systems unfortunately in the developing countries it's lacking and it's a great strain on resources as well so to summarize monitoring of the infant and child development is very important and if there are concerns the parent should understand the normal sequence of development they should seek help at the right age and appropriate management is important as well so uh, let's see if you have any questions